Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Miriam and this is a Sketchbox unboxing, June 2021. I'm trying out a new intro. The full description of each item will be listed in the box below. So let's go ahead and get started. Firstly, please forgive my hands. I'm trying to get my life together here, but nail polish went everywhere. Anyways, the artist on the front of the box is Sherry Mooney. I hope I'm saying that right. First things first, let's take out our sticker, put it in our sketchbook, and get ready for some swatching. We have our lovely postcard featuring art made with the items in this box, and this month's artist is Rain Frederickson. We also have our menu as per usual. The first item in the box is the Manami, I hope I'm saying that right, twin brush set retailing for $27.50. For six pieces though, seems a little steep for a marker that on first impressions looks and feels cheap. The body is just so slippery, and although the back of the box has the names for the colors, it doesn't have the numbers or the names on the marker itself. Here's the thicker side, sky blue, violet, and pastel, and here's the thinner side of them. Then we have neutral gray, blue, and blue celeste, and the thinner side of that. So right off the bat, although I'm not good with lettering by any means, I can already tell that this might sue a more skilled lettering type of artist because the brush isn't tapered in a way to make this beginner friendly in my opinion, since I am technically a beginner with lettering. Also, they're super squeaky in an annoying way. Doomsday Sayers mentioned Spongebob and when I first swatched these out before watching his video, I too immediately flashed back to Spongebob's boots. Can I take your order? Yeah, I have the Krusty Special. Thank you, sir. Next up is the Senny Lie ink brush in intense green retailing for seven dollars and 95 cents i'm sure i got the name wrong i know it's french uh well anyways to get these started we have to unscrew the top remove the black ring and then screw the top back on and you'll see the ink on the tube start to flow a little and then gently press on the sides emphasis on the gently or you'll end up like me ruining something beautiful hello darkness my old friend i've come to talk with you again Anyways, so at first it was hard to get started. It was really dry and I wasn't sure why, but then when I added some water to it, the ink started to flow much, much better. And when I say add water, I mean like dip the brush into some water. The Lip Plum brush marker in suede retailing for $2.59. It has a brush tip and a cute little nib tip. And while I was swatching this one, I wondered how it is that they got this red brown kind of color in the art postcard from this more cinnamon brown kind of marker. Hmm. Next is the Zip Ultra Fine Brush Pen in white retailing for $14. It has a nice brush point, so I'm positive I will love it. This is one of those twisty markers and I obviously don't learn my lessons because, yeah. Wow. It does seem to have a nice flow and I think it'll do its job just fine. So now I'm taking my little misting water bottle spray thing and spraying it all to see what exactly is water soluble and what is not. And to my surprise, nothing wants to budge. It had a little bit of bleeding, but once these are dry, these are really hard to reactivate and move around. And I mean all of it. And lastly, the beautiful art pad I ruined. Soiled it! The four by six inch custom Claire Fontaine mixed media pad in white with 20 sheets retailing for $9.99. These do seem very sturdy. So for the art, I'll be making an illustration inspired by the one, the only, the queen of Murder, Mystery, and Makeup Mondays, Bailey Sarian, and specifically this image right here. So I knew I wanted to do this illustration, so I did pre-record this sketch before receiving the box, which is why my nails look horrendous here, but whatever. My original plan was to make a sketch and then use my tracing pad to transfer the image to the mixed media paper, but I didn't realize I put the sketch too close to the binding, so my pad didn't fit properly. So lesson hopefully learned, I had to end up just erasing and working directly into my sketchbook. So I'll end up using the paper next time. So here I'm using the neutral gray marker from either, it's pronounced either Monami or Monami. I'm not sure if it's like a French marker theme thing going on here, but this, I don't know. These seem really, really 
really streaky and not to mention squeaky. But not only do they sound a little weird, but they kind of feel awkward in my hands too. I don't know, that, that could just be me. So yes, I'm not sure if this is one of those kind of markers where you have to just work really fast with it to get rid of the streakiness or if you have to layer it. I tried layering some areas to see if it would get rid of the streakiness, but it just wasn't doing anything, it wasn't budging. So it just leads me to believe that these might be, might seriously only be for lettering. So I'm, I'm not sure of what's gonna happen with these markers for me. But I, as you can see here, I tried to grab some water and a brush and see if I can maybe try to move it since I had just put it down and I didn't think I gave it enough time to dry and it wouldn't move at all. So my next idea was to just rub it on a piece of paper and maybe try to wet it from there. One of those marker Yubo papers, if anyone remembers from one of our sketch boxes, didn't really like it. I said I was going to use it as like a paper palette type of thing. Didn't work on this either. So then the next idea that I had, because it was just drying up entirely too quickly, I decided to grab a little porcelain palette and I used that to put the marker on and that worked out a lot better. They were very transparent though. There wasn't much pigment there, so it really leads me to believe that these truly are not meant to be used as watercolor markers at all. They're meant to use as like either illustration markers or as the purpose here says for just lettering and that's all that I could really do with it. Um, it has really nice colors. I really like the color of the box. The color of the box was really nice, all these blues. I ended up taking the teal ink brush and just going over the streakiness because just seeing that all those streaks was just killing me. It really just hurt my soul. And the neutral gray was starting to blend in with the roots of her hair. So I just took the teal marker and used that for the background instead. You know, the one thing about that brown marker that we have, or the suede marker that we have, is that it's really stiff. So I don't know how that's good for lettering because it's kind of, you have to press really hard for it to bend and I feel uncomfortable pressing it down that hard on a piece of paper because I'm scared that I'm going to mess up the tip itself. But yeah, it's really stiff. So I don't, I don't know about that marker. That marker might be, that That was the one surprisingly that dissolved best with paper, I guess you can say, with water, excuse me. That was the one that was able to handle water. I used it as the skin color and I used it for the hair. I'm probably gonna end up leaning to that marker if I wanna do some skin colors because it's like the perfect, perfect base for skin color. So I really enjoyed that. I liked using the markers for the butterfly. That was nice, doing the little details on the butterflies. It wasn't anything too crazy to do. I just wish they would be more water friendly. I wish I was able to use the water to really get that pigment going because that's what I'm comfortable with. These markers, I don't know. I don't know, it just it might just not be for me. Overall, Sketchbox did not let me down in June, but it didn't exactly wow me either. I wouldn't really recommend using these markers as watercolor markers. They don't at all anywhere claim that they can be used as such, but I'm not good with lettering, and I think either you have to use them straight out for lettering or for illustrating if you don't mind the streaky marks, and that's not for me, so I think I probably will not be using these much at all. Like, I'll have to force myself to use them, probably. The ink brush was really cool, and I'll definitely have use for the white pen, and who doesn't appreciate some mixed media paper? And that's all I really got from this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to do another giveaway at 500 subscribers and I'm almost there. If you have any suggestions for a giveaway or another way of using these materials that maybe I'm just not getting in this box, please let me know down below. Thanks again and I hope to see you next time. Bye!